Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market, right? It's like, oh, people were freaking out. It's, it's going down. This is it. This is it. All right, we had a, a red day and <laughs> I, I don't mean to laugh or anything, but you know, that's all kind of stuff coming across the news and they're like, we finally got bad economic news and the, the market took it bad and all this stuff. And I'm like, that wasn't what happened. Come on, man. I mean, I'm going to present that to you, but that wasn't what happened. I'm going to show you what, exactly what happened. It makes sense, okay? And, and then we're going to go with something more important. And I really want to get you guys' opinion on this um, because to me, it is a big deal. Now, maybe not at this exact moment, but it will definitely be. But I always, I'm one of those people, I don't like to wait for something to happen. I like to sit here and go, okay, let, let, let me let me uh, think about this and think way ahead on this. But I think it's just important to stay educated on stuff too. But, you know, understand this is the, the news that came out this morning. It's supposed to be bad for everybody. And it wasn't great or whatever. But, you know, the good thing is core PPI came down right? A little more than expected. That's good. Inflation is dropping, right? Then, of course, here come the sales. Shockingly, we didn't spend as much as they thought. And, of course, sales dropped negative 1.1% uh, versus negative 0.6. And then total retail sales month over month, negative 1.1% versus negative 1%. So, you know, no shocker there. And so, you know, everybody's, oh my God, that's that's terrible. And I mean, it's not the first time we got bad, bad economic news. And then, of course, you know, the other thing we got to think about, and maybe this did have an effect on the day, which is we got the debt ceiling coming up tomorrow. And I told members this afternoon, I said, well, let's not forget we got the morons in D.C. tomorrow. Congress can avert the economic disaster by increasing or suspending the, the debt limit as they have done before. Unfortunate for us is that if this goes as well as how they elected uh, the Speaker of the House, then, you know, it, it shouldn't be a problem. And I mean that totally sarcastically because that was a dumpster fire, right? And so that's tomorrow. I guess we'll figure it out if we hit it or not. We'll see what happens. And then, of course, the other thing was, I think, kind of shocked some people when Microsoft announced they're going to lay off 10,000 employees. That's big time. Why? Because their PC and, and software business is slowing down. So one of the main components of their business. So, you know, and that's a very well-ran company, right? And so I think that kind of took a few people off guard a little bit because it's had a nice little run-up. But what really happened is simple. We ran up against that descending trend line, right, that we can't seem to get out of, and we got slapped down like we stole something. I mean, that's exactly what happened. Look at that. Bounce, bounce, bye-bye. Sold off big time, right? And it's, you know, starting to look like, I swear, like the great uh, China wall or something, man. Just, we just can't get through. If you look at this right here, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, and that makes six times. And the more you get rejected... Uh, usually sometimes the harder it is to get above that because more bears start piling in at that moment. But, you know, understand also, let's, let's keep things in perspective. I did a member's video and they'll see that before you see this. But, you know, look at Bitcoin, man. I mean, does that look normal to you? I mean, look at the RSI. You know, I can't believe it. People actually started taking some profits, started taking some off the table. You know, I mean, yeah. You, congratulate yourself. Pat yourself in the back. You learn from 2020, right? Not to diamond hand everything. If you're that, if you're that far up in it, Never hurts to take some off the table because you never know where it's going to go, you know. And so definitely got to look out for other levels if you plan on uh, keep trying to short this thing of 22 and 24. But, you know, understand that that's what you see happen. And as I told did the members of the, uh, the day, I said, look, things are up huge. I showed you in yesterday's video. People are going to take profits when something is, something is up 50% in two weeks. Some things are up 50% in like a week, right? That's going to happen. That's normal. Right? And there's going to come a moment, if you want to know where this market is really going, when the short covering stops, because that's what's been happening, right? A lot of it. And they're getting squeezed. And then profit taking finally stops, right? Where do we end up? And then do the real buyers step in? It's the big question, right? I don't, I don't know. But, you know, understand this is what everybody's pushing for right here. And this is where market manipulation might take place. These are bear markets prior year on as far as what they call this trifecta, Right. Which again, this is what I was telling you, they pushed up the Santa Claus rally to in green for a reason, right? Up 0.8%, as you can see, 2022, first five days at 1.4%. But you can see all these other days has had, by the way, I didn't realize we had a bear market in 2016, which by my definition, we didn't, but by their definition, we did. It went down 15%, the S&P, and I guess that's a bear market to them. But you can see when you get this trifecta, you get these big returns on the year. And the one thing you'll notice missing in this is what? I don't see anything with the dot-com bubble crash, and I don't see anything with the financial crash because they didn't have the trifecta. They definitely had the Santa Claus rugs. I went to every single one of those, but their Januarys were horrible. I mean, they were horrific. None of them in the, in the green, right? And so, 
you know, big drop from, I mean, 2011, we had one, but I mean, it was 22% drop in like three or four months. So again, you got these short bear markets is what they're talking about. And then one, I didn't even see the bear market. You're going, look, we got to try that. It's going to be a great year, right? But then the, the two bear markets we kind of compare this to aren't even on the list. And so maybe, maybe we make it. But that's, that, that's what a lot of people are pushing for. And so if we get that, it's a psychological thing, right? And so the, the other question is, what's dumb money doing versus, you know, smart money? And you can see right here, if you look, Right there, you got dumb money way up there, like overextended really is what they're doing versus smart money kind of like coming down. Now they're buying a little bit, but they're nowhere near as enthusiastic as we are, as you can see. And you can see last time we got this high, well, end up having a, a very nice sell off in August right there. And, you know, it looks almost, almost identical, honestly, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see what they're going to do. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it. And if you're getting out of this, please hit the like and think about sharing the video, guys. And of course, another one was Tesla, right? And Tesla started off on fire. Boom. Started going up again. And like I told the members, you get through these, these volume gaps, it can move, right? And it's been moving over the last two days. And I don't know if it was this news right here. If you got any more detail about this, let me know. They came out and kind of spooked people. But it was saying that, you know, on this $13 billion debt he had to take out for Twitter, that the first big interest payment is due at the end of january so it'll be in basically 13 days and the question is you know is he gonna have to end up selling more even though he said he wasn't gonna sell at 2024 is he gonna have to do that in order to make this payment and i know that's the big thing it was well he said he wouldn't do it i'm like uh didn't he say that a couple other times and he sold i'm like look if the man is pushing the corner has to make a payment you know he's going to do what he has to do. I mean, he's proven he, he don't care about no shareholders or what anybody thinks. So, you know, he's going to do what he has to do. I'll be, I would be surprised if he did say, if it came out, he sold even more after he's very definitive about, I'm not selling until 2024, but you know, again, past behavior predicts future behavior. He's said it multiple times and he's done it. So, you know, don't hang your hat on what the man has to say or anything. I just want to see, you know, we'll get to see what happens. So I don't know if that's what spooked that or people just say, you know what? We're up how much? 37% in like two weeks or maybe in a week. It ain't been that long. I want to take some off the table. Maybe that's what happened. Sure could have, right? Because if you listen to Elon Musk, what's he say? Oh, we're going to recession. Like he's preparing the company for a recession. That's why he's doing these discounts, not to make you happy. And so you go buy the car. He's just set it right there. He said, oh, what do you do in a recession? You cut prices. That's what you do. You know, and we're definitely probably going to recession. So he's pretty adamant about that. That's what he's preparing the company to do so it'll survive. And so, you know, we'll have to see on that one. Let me know in, in the comments if you know anything more about that uh, as far as that big payment coming up. And it, do you think he's going to sell some more? That's the big question because, I mean, he's been on a nice runs. So if you're going to sell, don't do it when it's going down. Do it when it's going up, right? That's what usually smart money does. And so the other thing that came out was China, right? And you've seen their stocks go red the last couple of days. You know, they ran up huge. So, again, profit taking probably. But then again, it says for the first time their population is decreasing, right? And you can see that's the projection. Big drop, which is not good for their country, to be honest with you, because of the way their economy is based. But you can see us down here. Here's the United States, pretty much flatlining, right? And then this goes way out to 2100, by the way. But then like, it says Nigeria is going to skip us in 2050. But here is the big thing about this. And this is, you know, you got the two biggest economies now who I've showed you our population for. It ain't growing like it used to at all anyway because we just don't have that many kids anymore. But here's the biggest threat going forward. I, I definitely want to get your feedback on this one. There's some of you out there know way more about this than I do. Is, you know, it's not that the fact that we're not having as many kids. It's you got to look at the age, right, of what's happening. And what I mean by this your working class people. This is the ones you worry about the most. And so the, and the reason why you want to worry about that, the working class people, the age range of people who work, spend more money, right? Usually when you're younger, you're going to spend more money at 30 than you are when you're 80, right? Because you're downsizing to 80, you're expanding when you're 30, right? Because you're having a family, that kind of stuff. And so as I take you to this data, if we just start right here and look at the working age population from 15 to 64, starting in the 70s, moving forward. If this is a stock, you buy it, right? I mean, it's just skyrocketing then all of a sudden you go wait a minute what happens when we get past through 2010 here starting to curve off what well, that's not good wait a minute we get farther with 2016 what's happening it's starting to flatten out not going up anymore and so as we keep zooming in you can see this problem what i like to call a problem because even by 2018 before 2020 it was starting to come down right 
And so if you look, and a lot of it has to do with immigration, the fact we're not having as many, many kids and all that good stuff. Uh, even now you can see, even from 2022, you've seen this pop up. But again, still flat across, right? So it hadn't been on, on an upward trajectory of any kind of consequence for years. Then you look, and this is really the important part. And look right here to back this theory up. Not even a theory, to back the facts up. From 2010 to 2021, look at 20 to 34. Look how much it grew. Zip. Right, actually shrank 0.1% if you want to put it that way. 35 to 49 actually shrank from 20.6 to 19%, right? 50 to 64 actually stayed basically the same, 19.1 to 19.2, right? But look at 65 plus. Look at that. We're talking about millions of people, okay, not thousands. 13.1% to 16.8%. And I love this graph right here, which depicts what's going to be happening up to 2060. And I want you to watch the flow into the 65 or above range. You'll see what I'm talking about when it comes to the economy right there. You see how that's flowing in there? Why is that a big deal? Check this out. This is income to expenditures, right? Who makes the most money in the country? People that are working between 35 to 64 years old. That's when you make the most amount of money in your life. And that means those are the people that are spending the most, buying the houses, the cars, the groceries, uh, uh, you know, the Rolex watches, whatever you want to call it. But that's who's spending the money. And so as you can see, it's not just China that has a population issue here. You see it already right now with this worker shortage we have, right? But as people get older, they spend less. We all have grandparents. They downsize, right? They go into apartments or a retirement community or something like that. And so here's my question to you, and this is where I'm asking for your feedback. Who's going to be buying in the future? By 2030, every baby boomer will be eligible for Social Security, for crying out loud. Okay? So who's buying the houses? Who's buying all the cars? Who's buying all the big ticket items? Who's buying, you know, the Apple iPhones and all this other stuff? That's what I want to know. All right? So answer down in the comments what you think about that. Because it ain't like all of a sudden we're going to start having more kids, right? And if you wonder why politicians actually don't fix the problem on the border, if you believe there is one, because they get these numbers way ahead of us. Okay, so they know what the problem is. If you've ever wondered, and I've said this before and I actually did a video on it to prove it, why the government stopped balancing the budget in 2000, 23 years ago, last time we had a balanced budget anywhere close to it, and started running these huge deficits. They see this. They know, right, that any economy, especially our economy, the way it is built on services and stuff, you know, and around the stock market, it's not even built around the real estate market like China is. Ours is built around the stock market. Okay, and it's built around having a society that does not save. It's built around having a society that spends and spends and spends. You've seen presidents on TV going, go out and spend, 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 while they send us stimulus checks. Not to make us feel good and for us to save it, to go spend it, right? And so they know this data. They know what's coming up down the road. Why do you think they keep kicking the can down the road? Because they don't think, they don't think they're going to be around when this becomes a major problem, which is going to be sooner than people actually think, okay? That's just the way it is. That's just math. And so let me know what you think down in the comments. Again, it was when I look at that data, what worries me and why I'm glad I know it is because it's going to be hitting, like, I think, a major problem in the economy when my wife and I get ready to retire, which is the worst time you can have it happen, right? Because you depend on that 401k and IRA and everything you uh, work so hard to build up, uh, not the tank, right, when you get ready to retire. And there are people I've met who in 08 were getting ready to retire, and in the dot combo we're getting ready to retire. 2020 we're getting ready to retire, and guess what? Their money evaporated right in front of them. And it's a scary thing because you don't know when it's coming back. So anyway, just want to put that out there. Let me know what you think. I like to cover stuff like that, and it came across my desk. Now let me do research on this. So there you go. So anyway, let's see if we have a red day tomorrow. Put down in the comments. Do you think we're gonna have a red day or green day? Or was just one of those days where people are taking profits, bulls and bears are battling it out. This is a big, big moment for the market to see if it can still break above. Or they're trying to hold us in this chop box till we get to the Fed meeting, which is on the 1st, I believe, and try to get through some of these bigger earnings. That's kind of where we're at. Okay, so if you got anything out of it, hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Dude.